Welcome to day 19 of the 28 day body transformation audio seminar. I am coach Jerome. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to make some distinctions that are going to greatly help you in your diet and fitness transformation. Today, we are going to be talking about recovery. And let me recap the last two days very quickly. Over the last two days, I've talked about how the important relationship between intensity and volume and how it's an inverse relationship and that you can work out hard or you can work out long, but you cannot do both. Again, a maximum effort, maximum performance can only be sustained for a very, very brief amount of time. I gave you the metaphor of sprinters, how they can keep up a maximum pace for only about 20 seconds before that pace starts to taper off. And the same is ultimately true with your resistance training. I firmly believe that if you're performing more than five total sets per body part and your strength does not drop off drastically, that you are not working out with sufficient intensity. It also stands to reason that the greater the stress imposed on the body because of increased intensity, the more recovery may be required. Now, recovery is predominantly genetic. Every single trait of the human body is expressed through our genes. Things like uh, height being a little bit more readily apparent. So on one end of uh, the spectrum, you have very, very, very short people. On the other end, you have giants. And most of us fall into that nice kind of bell curve of the middle. You also have things like uh, skin color. You have albinos on one end. You have very, very dark people on the other end. And most of us, again, fall somewhere in that middle. So it stands to reason that recovery is also predominantly genetically uh, mediated, but it can be slightly aided by things like diet, additional rest, and uh, supplementation to a small degree. Your muscles actually heal fairly quickly, and most studies show that muscle protein synthesis rates, the amount of much muscle, excuse me, which you're building, goes back to baseline after about 48 hours. So if you performed a really, really intense workout, those muscles, uh, provided they're given adequate rest and nutrition, will essentially be almost like a growth mode um, for about 48 hours before it goes back to baseline levels. So at least on, from a theoretical position, you could conceivably train every muscle uh, in the body uh, three times a week, basically every other day. Uh, however, your joints and your central nervous system may take much longer to fully recover. And these are the issues that cause people to have long-term nagging injuries uh, from resistance training. Looking at joints, uh, joints do not get a lot of direct blood flow. So anybody that's ever injured a joint compared to torn a muscle can vouch for how long it can take for an elbow or a knee or uh, maybe certain parts of the back uh, can take a very, very, very long time to heal to where muscles usually heal, even if it's a tear over the course of a couple of weeks. The central nervous system too. Intense resistance training is a large physical stress on the body. There's a number of inflammatory hormones and there's an immune response that is uh, activated in the body to try and facilitate the recovery of that. And some of these hormone levels, again, this is uh, largely determined by genetics, but also rest and diet supplementation. Some of these can take uh, anywhere from, you know, two days, uh, if you're a little bit more genetically gifted to upwards of maybe 10, to even 15 days. And I'll try and find the studies uh, when I post this lesson today that I point out for some individuals uh, for certain tests, and I believe it was a forearm flexion, uh, maximum isometric strength had not returned for some individuals, even after a period of 15 days. The muscles got stronger, they got a little bit bigger, but the systemic response had not returned yet to baseline levels. But for our purposes, I'm, I'm more interested in joints. I totally reject the idea that if you lift long enough, you will eventually have nagging aches and pains. And this is uh, almost uh, what I see as an axiomatic truth with a lot of um, older individuals that have been in the iron game for a long time. These guys are getting up into their 50s or 40s. They're starting to notice that uh, elbows, backs, knees, a lot of the stuff is hurting them. And I, I suspect there's a number of reasons, but uh, underemphasizing recovery, I believe, is a big part of it. I also think they're probably doing too much volume. I also think they're probably not using perfect form. Uh, but we have addressed one of those and we'll talk about one of those in a future tape. Think about it though. If you get a knee replacement, and I think we all pretty much know somebody who's uh, had a knee or a hip done, they begin uh, resistance training 
as part of your physical therapy immediately with some people the next day after a surgery, certainly within the next week. Now, how could it be that proper resistance training in terms of bodybuilding or fitness can be destructive long-term to joints, but can be productive to joints immediately after a surgery, something very, very invasive and something much more stressful on the body than a set of squats. Truth is resistance training properly performed, slow, controlled, intense, with perfect form is good for your joints, not bad actually strengthens your joints. It increases the amount of synovial fluid in your joints, letting them be a little bit more lubricated. If you give your body enough time to rest and recover, it'll increase the amount of cartilage you have in your joints. Resistance training, I will repeat this again, properly performed is good for your joints, not bad for them. And recovery is a big part of that. Recovery is every bit as important as intensity for growth. Not 50-50, not 60-40, not 70-30, not any other ratio that you can think of, but literally 50-50. And the reason is as follows. The growth stimulus occurs from intense resistance training. You must impose a stress on your body that is viewed as a threat to your survival, such that you elicit the compensatory response of a larger stronger muscle mass increase, but the growth doesn't occur from your workout. The growth occurs as a result of rest and adequate nutrition. What you do in the gym simply sets that in motion. The magic happens when you rest and recover. And because of that, I like to view recovery as three types. There's short-term recovery, which I like to view as the uh, time between sets. Some people recommend 30 seconds. Some people recommend 60 seconds. If your primary purpose is building muscle, losing fat, I recommend only resting as long as necessary to feel optimally mentally and physically ready for that next set. If you were to keep that rest to a bare minimum, uh, like the high intensity interval training that a lot of people do, some of the circuit training stuff where you move from like a chest press immediately to a leg extension, to a pull down, to a shoulder press, to a tricep extension, to a bicep curl, unless your cardiovascular conditioning is very, very good, and this is a good way to build cardiovascular conditioning. This might be the best way to build cardiovascular conditioning, but again, that's a topic for another time. If you don't have that impressive a degree of conditioning, by the time you get to that third, fourth, fifth, sixth set in a row, you're going to be so taxed that uh, you're, essentially your cardiovascular system is going to wear out before the uh, um, anaerobic, excuse me, the anaerobic energy processes that are fueling the muscular contraction. Once you build that degree of cardiovascular strength though, and, and endurance, you can shorten those rest periods if you want. But because of that, I recommend only resting as long as necessary to feel optimally strong for another set. And this is going to vary. If you do a smaller muscle group, like, um, let's just say you do a, a set of calves, very, very intense. You might be good to go by the time you can move on to that next exercise. If you do something very, very demanding like back or maybe the quadriceps, uh, it could take five, maybe 10 minutes before you feel that you're fully ready for that next set. And at least initially, um, that's how I would recommend it. We can always address your specifics for your schedule. And uh, you can email me, fitcoachjerome at gmail.com. If you want to talk about your workouts, I can help you with some of that. But for now, short-term rest, short-term recovery, rest only as long as necessary to feel fully mentally and physically ready for that next set. Intermediate-term rest. Rest time between workouts. And this is a, a point that I firmly believe in that is not too popular with a, a lot of people that love the fitness lifestyle or people that work in the industry. I recommend fully recovering after one workout before moving on to the next. And again, the reason is um, while there are, while the muscles do recover quickly, you have to consider the systemic response. You have to consider your joints. You have to consider your central nervous system. Anyone who's worked out very, very hard for four or five, six days in a row, often by day three, four, five, six, uh, they're usually taxed by that last day. It doesn't seem like they can get enough sleep. They feel fatigued. Um, they just aren't as into it. This is very, very, very common. Um, I suspect that while there might be a mental aspect, I suspect there is some systemic fatigue that the body only has a fixed amount of resources available to recover from any stress imposed upon the body. So this is the metaphor I like to use. If you break a leg, 
or just any digit at all, but let's just say your leg. If you break your leg and you put a cast on it, uh, that leg will only heal so quickly. You can have a good diet, you can have good supplements, you can rest, but that leg is going to need a specific amount of time to heal. Performing too much physical activity, walking on that leg too much, walking without your brace too soon, performing too much direct activity with that leg or too much activity systemically as a whole is just going to retard that recovery process. It's going to take longer for that joint to heal. And it's actually possible to do too much activity to the point where that uh, joint actually worsens or that limb actually worsens. I look at your workouts the same way. If you have a really, really intense leg day and your legs are sore and you're feeling fatigued and you're just not in the mood, take the time and rest. Your other muscle groups, they're not going to go anywhere. It takes a long time before strength loss occurs if you're working out with proper intensity. Based on uh, my own numbers and that with clients, I find that it takes almost a month for some people, and I'm right around that point. It takes about a month before there's any degree of strength loss, and even then, it's very, very subtle, maybe like one or two repetitions, and that strength comes back within a workout or two. So taking an extra day, taking an extra two days, taking an extra three days, you know, after a very, very intense workout before your next workout is going to allow your body to maximally utilize the bioavailable resources that it has to fuel the recovery from that particular workout. If you only have a fixed amount of resources and you blast legs and then the next day you hit back, you only have half as many resources to go to each targeted location to fuel that recovery, right? That makes sense on some level. And while I get that it's not that popular, I know some people love going to the gym uh, very frequently, four, five, six days a week. I highly recommend if your primary goal when you go to the gym is just to look better naked, to build muscle, to lose fat, to fully rest, fully recover after one workout before you move on to the next. For most people, uh, this is going to mean you're not going to work out with weights more than about three days a week. For some people, again, depending on their genetics, this might be as little as one or two days a week or a couple clients I've had are even less frequent than that. Looking at long-term rest, long-term rest, I like to recommend every eight to 12 weeks or so, depending on your schedule, every two to three months, take a full week off from resistance training. So if you're working out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you finish that Friday workout, the next Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you don't work out at all. And then you pick up again on the following Monday. And the reason for this, again, is because your joints and your central nervous system require a significantly longer time to fully recover than your muscles do. And again, recovery is every single bit as important as intensity for building muscle. Building muscle is easy. I know a lot of guys, and I know a lot of people that will listen to this, actually have trouble putting on strength and size, but the formula ain't that complicated. So today's tape and the last two days, I cannot stress the importance. If you are having difficulty building muscle, if you're having difficulty building strength, you need to make your workouts as intense as possible. You need to cautiously regulate that volume. The second that you see your strength is starting to go down significantly, you're done. There's no point in doing any more. One very, very, very intense set going to failure through all three levels of strength is all you need to maximally stimulate muscular growth and size. The metaphor again I like to use is uh, performing multiple sets with adequate intensity is about as intelligent as rapidly pushing an elevator button thinking it's going to make it come faster. So after you perform with maximum intensity, you cautiously regulate your volume. You then need to rest and recover. And only once you're fully recovered, do you go and do that next workout? That muscle isn't going to go anywhere. The gym is not a social place. The gym is a place you go to put in work, to work on your body, to work on your craft, so you can maximize your physique and have more time, more energy, and more health and vibrancy for other areas of your life. Your assignment today is to consider very strongly uh, introducing additional rest. Whatever workout routine you're doing, uh, let me know, and you should have done that by now if you're listening to these, but at least entertain the idea of taking additional rest days as necessary. This will only benefit you, I promise. Thanks for listening, men, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.